So here is a sample problem. Um, it gives you a uniform uh, electric field of 360 newtons per coulomb. And if I take my x, y, z axis the way I have shown here, uh, that means the electric field, right, that's given as uh, 360, uh, is black, uh, 360 newtons per coulomb in the positive j direction, right? It's in the positive j direction along the y-axis. And you're asked to calculate uh, the electric flux through um, the right surface, the top surface, and then the left surface, and finally the total flux through the whole cube. Okay, And the length of the cube is also given to us, that's 10 centimeters, so I'll call it L, uh, L is 10 centimeters, or I can convert that to meters, 0.1 meters. Okay. So in any of these problems where you have plain surfaces uh, in an external electric field, a uniform electric field, uh, you, you can just use the formula E dot A or E times A times cosine theta. Um, and you can either use E A cosine theta or if you prefer, you can write it in your calculator notation and take the dot product, right? So however you prefer. So let's start with part A, uh, what's the flux through the right surface? So the right surface uh, is this one here, right? That's the right surface S1. And uh, the area vector or the normal vector is the outward drawn normal. So that's the normal vector, uh, which is also uh, the direction of the area uh, vector. So, so that's the area vector there, A. So uh, let me first use uh, the EA cosine theta to calculate it. So flux phi E. Uh, through the right surface, that means through S1, uh, is equal to Ea cosine theta, so it's E times A times cosine of the angle, and the angle between uh, the electric field, uh, electric field is to the right, and the area vector is to the right, so theta is zero here, cosine zero, so that's just E times A. So you just substitute your numbers, 360 newtons per coulomb, and the area is L squared, or 0.1 meters squared. So that will give you 3.6 newton meters squared per coulomb, right? So that's a positive flux. Field lines are leaving the surface. Uh, and similarly, I could calculate uh, the flux through the top surface. So if I look for the flux through the top surface, um, I have my normal vector uh, will be the outward drawn normal. So that's that way. And you can probably right away say that, uh, you know, the area vector is perpendicular to the electric field vector, right? So the electric field there is to the right. So that's 90 degrees. So there is no flux, or you can formally write it down. Uh, you can say flux through S2 is E A cosine theta, so E times A times cosine theta, which is 90 degrees, so cosine 90 is zero, so this is just zero, right? So, okay, that's uh, my part B. So this was part B, this is part A. And I can also do the same for um, this surface now, right, for S3, which is the left surface. And the normal vector for that is the outward drawn normal. So that's this vector here. That's the normal vector, which is also the direction of the area vector, right? So area vector here is opposite to the electric field vector. Or in other words, the angle at theta is 180 degrees, right? So you can go ahead and you can um, you can say part C is um, make some space. Part C uh, is phi e is equal to e a cosine theta. So it's e a cosine 180 degrees. And these are the magnitudes. So so if you substitute everything, you know, this is minus 1, uh, that's your 360 newtons per coulomb times 0.1 meters squared 
times cosine 180 is minus 1. So you get the exact same value as 3.6, but it's negative now, Newton's meter squared per coulomb. Okay. So, so once we have this, it's probably clear to say that um, uh, to, to go to part D, uh, we could just see that uh, the only non-zero flux is going to come from the right face, right face, and the left face. Uh, we showed flux through the top face is zero. Same reason flux through the bottom uh, face would be zero as well because the normal vector will be pointing downwards, right? And the electric field is perpendicular again. So, or you can say electric field vectors just came along the surface. So no flux through that. Uh, same reason, no flux through the front surface or the back surface as well. So we can say the total flux or the net flux, right? A net flux through the cube, right? Is the sum of all the fluxes. So that is a 3.6 plus a negative 3.6, right? A flux through all the surfaces added together will just give you a nice zero. So this is another way uh, to convince ourselves. Um, since the electric field is constant, uh, every field line that's entering the surface is also leaving the surface. So it makes sense that the net number of field lines that leave the surface, which is the meaning of the net flux, that is zero. Okay. So this is all you need to do. Uh, but in case uh, you were trying to uh, do this with the uh, your Calc 3 notation, that's totally okay as well. So, for example, in part A, if you if you rather uh, wanted to set up uh, a dot product, uh, you could have certainly done, I'll say R, uh, you could have done phi E is E dot A. So, the electric field um, has got no X component. It's got 360 newtons per coulomb in the Y direction, nothing in the X. Right, so newtons per coulomb are uh, dotted with the area vector um, for S1. The area vector is also in the y direction, so 0, comma 0.1 meters squared, right, comma 0 um, square meters, and that will give you when you do the dot pro product, it will give you exactly the same thing. You see. Uh, same way, if you were doing it here, you could certainly, you know, um, this is the dot product. So you can say phi E through S2 is E dot A. And your vector E is 0, 360, 0 newtons per coulomb dotted with the area vector. And the area vector for the top one is along the Z axis. So it is 0, 0. Comma point 0.1 squared square meters, and when you see the dot product will be zero. You see, and you could have done the same thing over here. It's more of the same. Uh, phi e uh, is e dot a. So here your e is the same thing. Zero three sixty comma zero newtons per coulomb dotted with the area vector that points to the left. That's in the negative y direction, so you would have um, 0, negative 0 0.1 squared, 8, comma 0 square meters, and that will give you the exact same thing that you have. And you can end by calculating the total flux through the cube to be 0. So in general, I would just say watch the problem. In some problems, uh, if the magnitudes of E and A are given, and you can easily figure out the angle. This may be the quickest way to do the problem. Uh, but in some cases, if the E is given in the IJ notation, perhaps it's easier uh, to do the dot product instead of trying to figure out the angles between the area vector and the electric field vector.